Death in Space Part 1 – How to Die in Space My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Before we start this life-threatening journey, I'd like to send out a quick thank you to all my patrons. It is still incredible to me that there are so many of you out there willing to support the cause. So thank you for joining the club, it is very much appreciated. Today's episode is part one of a two-part experience. An experience every starman on board a SpaceX Starship or a NASA Orion capsule will have to face chasing our dream. So I invited a guest star for today's episode. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Starman. He was so nice to visit and show us today what kinds of dangers he's going to face on the way to Mars. In part one, we'll take a deep dive into the hazards of space. We will explore the major dangers that lurk beyond our atmosphere. And in part two, coming up this Thursday, we will see how we can outsmart these dangers to give our Starman a chance of truly becoming an interplanetary traveler. So let's start this off by looking at why space is not the place you want to grow old in. Earth, the safe harbor of life in our solar system. Our planet, the blue marble, the pale blue dot. This is it, the only place in the known universe that we know of to harbor that spark of creation called life. But Earth wasn't always as we know it today. If you ask yourself what's an ideal place for life to flourish in, you'd probably come up with a field of flowers or a lush forest with a nice lake to it. Something that would fit more into a Disney movie. But life actually evolved in a very different place. Welcome to our little paradise, 4280 million years ago. Welcome to the Hadean Eon. Extreme heat, an unbreathable atmosphere, harsh cosmic radiation, volcanoes from below and meteors from above. Still, life came into existence in what we'd call a hell to today's standards as that's what Hadean means translated from Latin. As strange as it might seem, over billions of years life terraformed Earth into the paradise we got so used to that we don't even appreciate the way we should. But that's another topic, maybe for another episode. Over the millennia, life became soft. We became soft. This lush forest, this field of flowers is nothing like what surrounds us. The dark void that is space. If you watch this channel regularly, chances are high you love space. You love rockets, you love satellites and you love astronauts on the moon. But do you know what exactly you love? It's not a lush forest, that's for sure. Imagine that forest at minus 270 degrees Celsius in an almost perfect vacuum without trees. Welcome to interplanetary space. You see, the problem with colonizing Mars is not only building a rocket and then figuring out how to grow a lush forest in a toxic environment on our red neighbor. It's also the part in between. At its closest approach to Earth in July 2018, for example, Mars was still 57.6 million kilometers away. In 2006, we shot the New Horizons probe towards Pluto at a speed of roughly 58,000 kilometers per hour. If we shoot a spacecraft towards Mars at this speed, it would get there in 942 hours or 39 days. That sounds easy, right? But it isn't. If we pointed the rocket straight at Mars and launched it, Mars would be gone by the time the spacecraft would reach its target. Mars orbits the Sun as all the other planets do, so getting to Mars is more of a chase. This makes the trip a lot longer. The shortest we ever managed to do was Mariner 7's flyby in 1969. It took the probe 128 days to get to Mars. If we completely ignore the fact that Mariner 7 did a flyby and so didn't have to enter orbit, it would mean 128 days of pure danger for our brave starmen in their SpaceX Starship. But what about it? What are those dangers exactly? What would our starman have to endure to reach that future lush forest? Vacuum or how to die by lack of zeros. Space, the final frontier. These might be the words that come to mind when you gaze up at the stars on a clear night. But what about it? What exactly is that dark stuff that separates the stars? It's space, mostly empty space. But how empty is it exactly? The average density of interplanetary space is 1000 atoms per cubic meter of space. But as always, let me put that into perspective for you. Each cubic meter of air on Earth contains about 10 trillion trillion atoms. A trillion, by the way, is a one with 18 zeros. 
Therefore, 10 trillion trillions is a one with 24 zeros. This is reduced to around 4 trillion trillion at the top of Mount Everest. A hundred kilometers up at the border of space, the common line, there are around a million trillion atoms per cubic meter. At the International Space Station, roughly 350 kilometers away, there are only around 10 trillion. 100,000 kilometers from the Earth, over a third of the way to the Moon, there are around 7 million particles per cubic meter. At half the distance to Mars, the density is down to about a thousand atoms per cubic meter. And in intergalactic space, there are only about 10 atoms per cubic meter of space. So on the journey from the surface of Earth to the surface of Mars, we go from 10 trillion trillion atoms per cubic meter to 1000 atoms per cubic meter in interplanetary space. But what about it? What exactly is the danger our starman is facing when he's missing a few zeros? Loss of pressure in general is a very bad thing for our starman to happen. Our atmosphere is essential for us. It has exactly the right pressure for our bodies to exist. If you reduce pressure to a vacuum, all sorts of things happen in our body. The absence of normal atmospheric pressure, the air pressure found on Earth's surface, is of great concern to our starman. Upon sudden decompression in vacuum, our starman's lungs would rupture, due to the air suddenly wanting to get out very rapidly. Then our starman's blood vessels, especially under the skin, would start to rupture, due to the gas inside the blood wanting to boil out. In fact, every fluid in our body exposed to the vacuum would start to boil including the saliva on our starman's tongue. So starman would be cooked alive, even at body temperature. There has been one case where a human in fact experienced exactly that by accident. In 1965, during a test in the vacuum chamber at the Johnson Space Flight Center, a ruptured spacesuit exposed a test candidate to near vacuum conditions. He passed out in under 15 seconds. When he woke up, he described that the last thing he felt before losing consciousness was the saliva on his tongue boiling. Under normal conditions, it would have taken 30 minutes to repressurize the chamber. They did it in about a minute to be able to save him. If he had been subjected to the vacuum for much longer though, he would have most certainly died. Another obvious problem for our starman would be lack of oxygen, which leads to a rather quick death. What wouldn't be a problem against common belief though is temperature. In this case, temperature is misleading though. Temperature gets dangerous if the energy can be transferred. An oven poses no danger to you because the heat can't get out. A deep freeze chamber doesn't pose a danger either if you are not inside of it, as your heat can't be transferred into the cold. And that's the same in space. As there are no atoms around you, almost no heat can be transferred from you to space. There's a little infrared radiation, so you'll cool out eventually, but that would take a long time. So no insta-freezing, sorry. Also, you would not explode in a low pressure environment. There is pressure inside you that wants to get out, but it is spread out very evenly. Your body is quite capable of keeping the pressure in long enough for you to not explode instantaneously. Radiation or how to die from cosmic rays. So what about radiation in space? Would that be a danger to our starman? Our sun. Our light, our warmth and one of the main reasons for life on Earth is located just roughly 150 million kilometers away from our home world. It is a 1.4 million kilometers ball of mainly helium and hydrogen. It is a giant fusion reactor putting out unimaginable large amounts of radiation every second. Together with cosmic radiation from outside our solar system, it constantly subjects us to radiation. Fortunately, Earth has a strong magnetic field and an ozone layer in the atmosphere, protecting us from almost all of it. The biggest problem here are so-called cosmic rays, either from our sun or other stars. These are atoms, accelerated to near light speed, racing through space towards us. When these atoms hit the human body, they can destroy cells, damage neural tissue in the brain and even our DNA. But are the amounts of radiation in interplanetary space harmful? On Earth, the average dose of radiation is 1 millisievert per year. Millisievert is a measurement unit measuring the energy going through your body. You don't have to know how much that is though for the comparison. Just remember that that's the amount you'd get on Earth's surface in one year. 
On Mars, you'd get 200 millisievert. As Mars does not have much atmosphere and no magnetosphere or magnetic field surrounding it. In interplanetary space, where our poor little starman is, you would get 700 millisievert per year. So that's the dose of 700 years in one year. In fact, Apollo astronauts reported seeing flashes before their eyes. Those were cosmic rays, also known as heavy ions, hitting the retina in their eyes. Though you do not travel to Mars for a year, let's say Starman can make it to Mars in three months. That's 175 millisievert accumulated over the whole flight. One in six Apollo astronauts got cataracts in their eyes. That is a clouding of the eye that eventually leads to blindness if not treated. So cosmic radiation is doing damage. The question would be how much damage is caused, but that's a really hard question to answer. NASA's human research program has studied the effects of heavy ions on our body. There is no clear answer yet though, as we have very little experience with human interplanetary travel. Some, including Elon Musk from SpaceX and Robert Zubrin from the Mars Society, say it's negligible. Others, especially NASA officials, say it isn't. So for now, it is a mystery if Starman would arrive on Mars unharmed or if he would have long-term effects leading to brain and DNA damage and eventually cancer. Zero gravity or how to die from floating. The human body can tolerate many things. Hard work, extreme temperature, high accelerations and it can even tolerate radiation up to a certain level for quite some time. And all these things are needed to get to another planet and survive there. But there's even another thing added to the mix that Starman would have to endure for us. Lack of gravity. Have you ever imagined how cool it would be to lift heavy things while standing on the moon? How cool it would be to jump 20 meters or to just float in space? Welp, I hate to destroy your dream. What might be cool for a moment is harmful for your body possibly more than anything else in space. The most notable example for the effects of long-term low gravity exposure to the human body would be Scott Kelly and his twin brother Mark Kelly. Where Mark Kelly stayed on Earth as a control subject, Scott Kelly agreed to stay on the ISS for a whole year to study the effects of microgravity on the human body. In space, everything is weightless. As soon as we experience weightlessness for a longer time, our body develops a very bad habit. It starts to reduce itself. When we don't constantly use our muscles and strain our bone structure, our body gets rid of what's not used. In space, that might be no problem at first. But could the effects of zero gravity harm our starman on his journey to Mars? Scott Kelly did hard exercise every day to keep his body in shape. He worked out as much as an athlete would on Earth to prevent the damage from happening and it seems like he had success. There were some minor changes. His retina got thicker, his carotid artery got thicker, his chromosomes got changed. Of the chromosome changes, 90% reverted back to normal after he returned to Earth. 10% though stayed changed. His bones and muscles were mostly preserved as he did a great job with his exercises. So no, even if we get subjected to space's almost non-existing gravity, it does not harm our health that much. At least not on a trip to Mars. Starman is safe, but he has to work out a lot on the flight. Micrometeorites or how to die from super fast dust. Now this last one is very popular in Hollywood movies. When Sandra Bullock is fighting for survival, eyes widen and popcorn is chewed. But is the danger real? Would Starman have to constantly be afraid of getting hit by these tiny but very fast micrometeorites? Micrometeorites are smaller than a pinhead in size and only a few milligrams heavy. But they travel very fast. Even though they are so small and rare, they pose a real danger to astronauts. So real that there have been quite a few hits on spacecrafts that we know of. The cupola on the ISS, for example, has a shutter system for the windows to protect it from micrometeorites. So would Starman be in danger? Yes and no, micrometeorites exist, but they are very rare. So Starman would be relatively safe if he has the right protection. So what's the conclusion? It probably depends on the side of the argument you're on. There are those who say that safety comes first. And there are those who might argue that frontier exploration is not about safety first and can't be as there might be unknown aspects that we can't get rid of or mitigate. When the Apollo program worked towards getting the first human on the moon, people died. 
Still, brave astronauts continued, knowing they might not come back. Waiting for that moment when everything will be safe might not be an option after all. But what we can do is protect our Starman from those risks as good as we can and give him the safest journey possible. Now you might be asking Felix, what about it? What kind of protections would Starman need? And I would respond to you, remember? This is a two-part episode. Find out in Thursday's episode of What About It. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will Starman arrive on Mars in his starship or will he suffer death in space? As always, tell me in the comments. And the end of the episode is always reserved to those special people sharing a Discord server with me and more importantly paying for something that is totally free because they love it so much, my patrons. And as in every episode, there are more names to put on that list. Everybody give a warm welcome to Martin Bioli, Thomas Kelly, Simon Gould and Pete N. You guys are my heroes. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most. To bring you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. The pale blue butt. The pale blue butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Space, the final frontier. And there are those who might argue that safety first is not what I wanted to say. Oh. <laughs>